Hello guys, welcome to a new video and in this new video we are going to go over some OSPF um, configuration and we are going to configure as you can see right here area 1 is going to be on this side of router 3, 1, 2 and this side of router 8 and then we're going to have to have the backbone area which is area 0 um, R4 is also going to have area 0 for that and then after that uh, I'm probably going to, yeah I'm just going to configure BGP over here or I'm just going to configure default route to go um, send directly to R5 and then after that I want to configure network address translation I might do some um, summary um, summarization in this video and I also might do some OSPF authentication so just stay there with me and let's go ahead and start with this configuration um, I have not configured anything yet so let's go ahead and start with area 1 and as you can see we're going to start with router 1 down here and you should be able to see this and let's go ahead and give it a host name um, let's go ahead to interface gigabyte 0 oops I don't have any other interfaces there you go now you can see them this is 0, zero, zero 1 over here okay zero, 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 0 okay great let's go ahead back to the console so we're going to go to gigabyte 0, 01 which is the one going to router 3 and configure that IP address correctly um, so 172.16.4.2 slash 30 if you know slash 30 is at 252 let's do another shutdown and from here I'm going to configure OSPF area um, OSPF first ID of 1 and area 1 and the way I'm recent I'm doing it from the interface why I'm enabling OSPF from the interface is because if you enable it from the interface and if you change your, pa your IP address it's going to automatically change um, with the OSPF as well but if you do it from the router OSPF plus ID of 1 and then put the network there and if your IP address changes here um, you're gonna have to change that network um, from the router um, OSPF plus ID of 1 but if you do it from here it's going to change with the IP address so that's why I do it for here okay so now let's go ahead to router 3. Um, let's configure router 3 gigabyte 0, 01. Um, first, of course, host name so I can know which one I'm configuring. Interface gigabyte 0, 01, same one, IP address. 172.16.4.1, and you know, 172.16 through 172.31 is a private IP address. There we go, slash 30. Uh, no shutdown. Did I do no shutdown over here? I think I did. Yes, I did. Now let's see if I able to ping 172.16.4.2, which is this one over here. We should be able to do it. There we go. So we're able to ping it. Now let's configure OSPF. IP OSPF for SID 1. It doesn't matter what process ID you use with OSPF, it only matters with the yeah, IGRP. Okay? Um, but the area does matter. So the area needs to be area 1. I believe I configure the same area. Yep, because this entire network over here is going to be area one. And as you can see, OSPF, OSPF is running. And to verify that, you, you can do do um, do show IP OSPF neighbor, and you can see that we have a neighbor relationship with 72.16.4.1, which is router three. Um, and full state BDR. So which one is a BDR? You can do a do show IP OSPF interface gigabyte zero one. Let's see who is the designated the backup resident. So we are the backup designated router. So that's our state. And then the DR or designated router is one seventy two. Wait, let me see. Hmm. Okay, so the backup designated router, I'm sorry. ID is 172.16.4.1, which is this one. So R3 is the um, backup designated router. And the reason is because we have the same priority one for router one and router three. But since they both have the same priority and I have the highest IP address, then I want the designated router. So R1 became the, the designated router because it has the highest IP address, as you can see right here. 
Okay, so now, since R3 and R1 are working, now let's go ahead to interface key over 0 slash 1, 0 slash 0, which is a 1 pointing to R2. And for here, interface or IP address, 172.16.3.2. And which one do you think is going to be the destination router for this one? For this network over here or for this link? It's going to be router 1 again because it has the highest IP address, okay? But I can change that, OSPF, um, IP, OSPF, OSID of 1, area 1 as well. Um, and I can change that, and I'm going to show you how to change that. So let's go to R2 and do that. Config T, let's give it a host name, R2, interface, we have 0 slash 1, IP address of 172.16.3.1 Okay, so let's do no shut down. Let's do ping 172.16.3.2 which is router 1 and we're not able to ping that IP address 16.3.2 now shut down okay what did I configure let's go ahead to other two again so did I configure? Ah, configure the wrong IP address. So let's go no, no IP address here. Okay, and also do no IP OSPF one area one. Sorry for that. We gotta go interface zero 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 IP address one seventy two sixteen dot three dot one slash thirty. Now shut down. Now we should be able to ping 172.16.3.2. Okay, so now let's go IP OSPF um, priority. Um, so we're going to set the priority higher than R1. So let's set it to 2. And since this one is to 2 now, this one is going to become the designated router, even though R1 has the highest IP address. Um, what matters is the priority. Okay, IP. OSPF and then from here what we are going to do is area I mean OSPF 1 area 1 right and there we go so now let's give it a couple seconds there we go now it's full loading let's do to show IP OSPF neighbor there we go and as you can see full state and we are the designated router because our priority is higher than r1 our priority is 2 okay so r2 became the designated router because of that okay great so now what we are going to do is we are going to configure r2 r2 gigabit 01 IP address 172.16.2.2 slash 30 now shut down now this one is going to go to OSPF on 1 and the area is going to be 0 so now let's go ahead to RH config T let's go to host name of RH interface gigabit 0 slash 1 P address 172.16.2.1 slash 30 now shut down IP OSPF 1 area 0 now we should be able to form in every relationship let's give it a couple of seconds I believe it takes what um, forgot how long it takes for it but if you want to you can just go ahead and google that so R8 and R2 Still waiting. Let's see if I'm able to do ping. Did I do one on R2? I did one on gigabit one. One seventy two sixteen that two that two. That two that one two five two. Now shut down. And I did not shut down. Do ping. One seventy two that oops, here we go. So even though um OSPF is 
full and loading. Let's do a ping that two, that two. There we go. I was able to ping router two, so that's great. Now let's go to Java interface close shot zero, which is a one pointing to router three. So this is IP address 16 that one that one. 252 and shut down IP OSPF 1 area 0. Now let's go ahead to R3 interface gear 00 IP address 172.16.2.1.2.252 and shut down IP OSPF 1 area 0. But actually, this is not supposed to be area 0, it's supposed to be area 1. Ah, uh, forgot my bad for that. Sorry for that, guys. Let's do area one, and over here needs to be area one as well. Area one. Let's go ahead to our two. Do the same. Let's negate this. Area one. So you can see that the neighbor relationship went down, but then it should come up if you do. To show IP OSPF neighbor, um, you can see that this one is full and running already. Um, if we do do show IP OSPF interface, get up zero zero, and this one is in the state still waiting. Um, and it's not waiting anymore. And one of them went down. So Giga Zero One went down. Did I configure it right? Invalid packet, mismatch area, area one, R8. Did I do it for, I only do it for zero slash zero. Let's do it. slash one no IP OSPF one area one then IP OSPF one area zero let's just shut down just because let's just shut it down over here let's do it again no IP OSPF one area one IP OSPF one area zero Now shut down over here to show IP or SPF. Actually, IP or SPF neighbor. Uh, we only have one right now, which is on Gigabit 00. So these two are working, but Gigabit 00, 00, 01 is not working. Um, let's do, let's just show. Um, Show run and let's do a section over here. Interfaces. Make sure that interface gigabit zero one is on error zero. Great. Let's go to R2 and do the same and show IP or show run to a section. Interfaces. Gigabit zero one should be in area zero as well, but it is shut down. So config T interface gigabit zero one not shut down. And that should bring the interface, and then we should be able to form an every relationship. Show IP OSPF neighbor. There we go. So now we have loaded. Okay, great. So this entire network right here is in area one, which is great. Just what I wanted it. And now, um, router H. What I'm going to do is I'm going to config T interface gear by zero slash three, which is the one going to R4. Um, what I want to do over here, what do I want to do, guys? Um, let's go ahead and configure a default route to R4. So from R8 to R4, let's go ahead and IP route. Actually, let's go ahead and exit IP route. And then do this how you can mm, I believe is two by five or two by five or two by five or two by five. 
Did I forget how to do this? So the first one IP route um, allows that. Uh, okay. Destination to any destination. And then where do I want to send it? I want to send it via interface QJB03. I want to send it via gigabit internet zero slash three. Okay, that's fine. So now let's go to interface gigabit zero slash um, three IP address two hundred that one that one that one slash thirty. Now shut down, and now let's go ahead to R4, config T, IP, let's give the host name of R4 first, and then interface give us slash 3, IP address 200.1.1.2, now shut down, now I should be able to do a ping to 200.1.1.1. There we go, so I'm able to ping R8. Um, I'm able to ping R4 from R8. Wait, I'm able to ping R8 from R4. Yeah, that's what I did. So we have connectivity. Now what I want to do, let's go ahead over here. That's it. And let's do IP route 0, zero. Um, And then I want to do is gigabit. 0 slash 3. Now from R1, which is all the way down here, I want to do ping 200.1.1.1. See if I'm able to ping. Ping that. I'm not able to do that. And why is that? Let's go ahead and do n show IP route. So as you can see, we do not have a route to the 200 network. So what we need to do is we gotta go to R8 and we have to insert that um, default um, gateway, meaning that I want to, whenever you, I don't know the IP address, I wanted to send it to R8. So we have to go to router or SPF1. Um, I believe it's originate, no? Let's see what commands we have here. Um, network, no, 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 no. So default information, that's what it's called, default information. Um, originate. And let's do always. Now, if we go to R1, show IP route. Now, as you can see, we have an E2, which, is, which stands for external. And it is saying to send it via 172.16.4.1, which is this way. And if we send it here, it's going to send it to R3. And what is R3 going to do? Show IP route. IP route is going to send it via 172.16.1.1, which is this way. Okay, so now we should be able to ping the 200 network. Ping 200.1.1. There we go. So now I'm able to ping um, our eight IP address. And now I should be able to ping our four IP address as well. And there it is. So I'm able to ping our one and our two. Okay. I mean, yeah, our, our eight and our four. Okay. So that this is great. So now we have connectivity from here to our four, but we cannot ping the two that one network, which is a network over here, right? So we're not able to ping this network over here. So what we need to do is let's go ahead to R4. And what we're going to do is configure a BGP. But actually we do not have, if you go interface gigabit zero slash two, IP address 200.1.2.1. Let's go ahead and 
think that we should be able to ping it, right? Now shut down. Let's go ahead to R1 and ping the network. There we go. Now I'm able to ping it. So we have connectivity all the way to 200.1.2.1. Let's see if we are able to ping 200.1.2.2. But we need to configure that um, IP address first. So let's go ahead to R5. Config T. Let's give it a host name of R5. Um, let's go to interface gigabit slash zero. IP address of 200.1.2.2.252. And let's go ahead to R1 and let's try to ping it. 200.1.2.2, which is R5. IP address. Okay. And you can see that we are not able to do that. And if you do a trace route to 200.1.2.2, we're going to see that we are sending it via the 172.16.4.1, which is this one right here. And then after that, it goes to 172.16.1, which is right here. And then it stops there because our eight does not have if you do show IP route, we do not have a route to the 200.1.2 network. Okay, so our eight does not know where to send it. So that's why it stops there from our one. So what we need to do, we need to configure um, BGP between our four and our five. And then after that, we're going to redistribute OSPF into BGP and BGP into OSPF. Okay, so let's go ahead to our four. Um, let's go ahead to router, BGP, 12, 12. And then we're going to say network. The network that we want to add is 200.1.2.1. Actually, that's zero. And then the mask is going to be 255.255.255.252. And then our neighbor is going to be 200.1.2.2, which is this one over here for R5. And the remote autonomous system that I'm going to configure is going to be 1213. All right, so let's go ahead and configure 1213. Router BGP 1213, right? Then after that, let's do a network 200. Hmm, cannot pick. So let's go configure. Why did I not pick? Oh, it did not, was not able to pick because this one we need to do a no shutdown. So now let's go ahead and configure it again. And there it is. We did not get the error again. Network 200.1.2.0. Mask 255.255.255.252. Neighbor 200.1.2.1. Remote autonomous system is 12.12. And this should make a. Um, we should have a neighbor relationship now. Anytime. There we go. Now we have a neighbor relationship with R4 and R5 using BGP. Now the next step that I want to do is I want to configure interface gigabit slash one with IP address of 192.168.1.1.24. Now shut down. Now open R5. I should be able to ping the server to ping 192.168.1.2, which is this one over here. There we go. I'm able to ping that server, which is great. So now what I want to do, BGP 12.13, we need to add another network, which is 192.168.1.0, mass. 255.255.255.0. Great. So now, since our four is running OSPF over here and BGP over here, we need to redistribute that. And let's go ahead to R4 and do that, guys. Okay. So first of all, we are in go back. We are in BGP. So now we're going to redistribute, and it's going to like what? What do we want to redistribute? Or what we want to redistribute OSPF? Which process ID? Process ID of one. And what do we want to do? We want to redistribute metric. Okay, and let's just give it the metric of two. All right, so now, 
since we are redistributing, we could do it to show IP route. Okay, we don't see anything here. But if we go to our five to show IP route, we're still not able to see anything from here either. So let's go to our four and let's go ahead to router OSPF. Of I do one. OSP router OSPF. Redistribute. BGP 1212 metric metric of one subnet. Now let's go ahead to R8. Show IP route. Show IP route. Okay, still nothing. Hmm, let's go to R1. Let's try to ping 200 at 1.2. Two. We're still not able to ping 200.1.2. Um, let's go ahead and do show, not from here, from our four. And show IP OSPF. Show, let's do a show run. Let's do a section. And let's do router. So the router 12.12, network 200.1.2, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, redistribute, OSPF, 1. So that's good. Huh. Let's see, network 200. Okay. So this is good. Let's go to R5, show, run, section, router. So name, 200.1.1.12.12.252. We also have this network. What if we do from R4, show, IP route. We have this BGP route over here. Let's go ahead and go back to R8. So it is still now redistributing. And why are we now redistributing? Um, is it because of the static IP address? Um, let's go ahead and do show IP OSPF. Maybe our topology database okay the database hmm okay everything looks fine over here but why is it not redistributing let's go ahead and just show run on our eight Let's go ahead and actually show IP OSPF database. Router ID 200.1.2.1. I think I did something wrong. Let's see. Go ahead to show IP or show run section interface. Let's verify the interfaces. So gigabyte zero 01, no IP address. Giga was zero, zero 02, which is this one, that one, that two, zero 03. Hmm, okay, so I configure, let's see, that. well, this is right. Yeah, so this is right. Okay, so. What am I missing? So I'm missing from Gigabit 03 the IP OSPF 1 area 0. That's what I'm missing. Config T interface Gigabit 0 slash 3 IP OSPF 1 area 0. 
and show IP or SPF neighbor. I don't have any network on R4. Let's go to R8 and see what's going on, on R8. So I did not do it on Giga03 either. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Config G, interface Giga03 slash 3, IP OSPF 1, area 0, and show IP OSPF neighbor. And there we go. So now it is on the two way, and then it's going to go to, come on, you can do it. Two way, two way. Still says two way, but at least it is showing. Let's go ahead to R4, show IP OSPF network. This one. Now it is in the X start. So it is about two. But it still says two way over here. And this one it says X start. Config G, interface Giga 0 slash 3. Oops, here we go. Now it's loading. Okay, so I'm able, I formed that relationship with R8 and R4. So now if we go to R8, show IP route. Now you can see that we had that external route 2182.168.1.0 and 200.1.2. So now from R1, I should be able to ping R5. So ping um, 200.1.2.2. And 200.2.1, and also thing 192.168.1.1, and that one that two. There we go. So I was able to ping R5. Great, working great, just the way I wanted it. Now let's see if we can configure it. Uh, network address translation. Actually, we're not. Yeah, that's not going to work. Okay, let's just leave it like this for now. And as you can see, guys, I'm not going to configure that. Okay, we just, um, this video already, it is a little bit too long. And I'm going to leave it right there. So what I did in this video, I configured OSPF multi area and network with area one and area zero. Then I configured BGP. And then I redistribute BGP into OSPF and OSPF into BGP and we can verify that by going to R5 show IP route and you can see that we have the route to the 172 networks over here inserted it doesn't say that it is external but it, it is an external network because it is coming from OSPF okay so and I also configure default originate um, so we can, whenever we get a IP address and we don't know where it's going to go, we're going to send it via R8 and then R8 has default um, route to just send it to R4, okay? And then R4 takes care of whatever because uh, the rest of the networks are on this side. So this is it for this video guys. If you guys have any questions, just leave me a comment on the video below. And also guys, also guys, if you have a Twitter account, you have to go ahead and follow me, okay? You have to go ahead and follow me at CCNA Daily Tips, okay? And if you don't have a Twitter account, hey, just go ahead and create one. We have a lot of fun here on Twitter where I post all my videos and a lot of laughs for the CCNA, also for the CCMP. And thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.